Sound check. Sound check, sound check. Can you guys hear me? Sound check. Ah, there you go. Sound check, sound check. Can you guys hear me? Setting it up. Sound check. Ah, there you go. Sound check, sound check. All right. Okay, let's finish this. Uh, I guess the final part of uh, our Blade Soul discussion. Uh, a lot of people are asking me uh, regarding my crit auto attack build. So for crit auto attack build, there are a couple of ways you can go with that. Uh, I guess the first one is the flea build. So let's try and reset. So let's start with uh, crit AA build. So crit AA build, obviously there are different uh, ways you can go. Uh, you can go full crit AA with hit. That way you can still use your uh, soul depravity. Second one is that crit AA build with low dex high AG so that you can just utilize the uh, second wave of SD just for the what they call it execute skill, right? So Usually if you are going for a crit AA build Your headgear and tail will most probably use this following combination uh, a nine tails, right? Because this increases our flea by 5%. I should enhance this. And then for the headgear, it's this one. And then I need to enhance this. What happened to my enhance? Uh, face gear, since we're crit AA, we're gonna focus on uh, crit damage for now, okay? But uh, you can certainly use. Uh, winter crown but we'll we'll go about that later where's our face this one or you can also go with uh, a pdi one and flee so it really depends on how you want to build your uh blade soul since we're going with a uh, flea build might as well uh, use this one that has some flea enchants I'll just enhance this so that it's easy to uh, switch back and forth. And then for mouth, we want to take advantage of a uh, Zeal 4. Unfortunately, I'm not lucky enough to get a gacha gear with uh, Zeal 4, so I, I'm still using this. However, however, we can compare it with uh, the new gacha mount. And where did I put it? Let's see. I put it here. I had some dupes. Oh, there we go. Let's use this. Uh, we'll test it against a Zeal for mouth and just this one and let's see which deals more damage right obviously if this has zeal 4 then of course this will <laughs> deal more damage than my spike scarf but we'll see and then for back for back uh, if you notice in the tournament i used uh, starlight sweetie mainly for the sleep effect right uh, but there are other ways you can go with the back gear and uh, we'll discuss that later as we go Okay, and as for the left hand side, uh, we'd, we'd like to take advantage of uh, a Hermit's bundle and a Fissure Beam. Okay, 
this is the best uh, combination for my testing but uh, we'll go ahead and test it later and then for uh, garment we'd like to use a uh, cloud undershirt because the first build uh, we're going to discuss is focus on crit attack with uh, SD as your execute and then uh, we'll test different uh, armors uh, to to compare which armor will yield us best damage best dps best utility uh and price to efficiency ratio okay and then we'll also test uh death gash i know death gash is uh, popular because of the last uh, tournament and it has its pros and cons and there's uh a hidden not sure if it's hidden or uh, a bug but if you notice here I have 25k attack right and if I equip this let's enhance this okay 20k and then uh, I don't have any SB here and only 580 attack i'm not sure how calculation goes but our attack is being boosted by a lot pumps up to 24 uh thousand so we'll compare it with uh assassin's jewel okay we'll discuss the pros and cons between the two weapons okay all right now that we have our base build here or base equipment uh let's start with uh stats stats okay if we're going for a flea build and you want to maximize you want to hit a uh, thousand plus then uh you definitely would like to max your agi right and again uh this is a flavor that you have to decide on yourself which one you want to build do you want to sacrifice uh, a lot of stats for agi just to hit that uh freakishly high flea together with uh, your cards and enchants then go and max your agi right if you're gonna ask me i think 130 is already enough sure we'll be missing around uh 29 uh flea plus some modifiers but we're sacrificing a lot of uh stats just for uh flea but again it it's up to you if you're joining a tournament where uh relics are not welcome or not allowed then sure it's gonna be a battle of uh hit and agi right that's gonna be the meta however uh if you go if you're going for uh, a balanced build i would suggest around 130 so you can utilize uh, a lot of skill points because as you add more agi i guess you can utilize 113 uh eight so that uh, you still use 17 uh, per stat point because you incre if you increase it after 138 now it's 20 that's a lot of uh, stat attribute points that you're gonna lose so let's stick 438 because uh, it's the threshold for 17 attribute points and then let's see if my cast time uh, we we'll figure out decks later if uh, there are some skills I think we can test it now but I don't want to use the dummy here because I haven't used my stamina I think they haven't fixed it if I attack the dummy here um to call this I'm gonna lose some uh, stamina are there subs I, I think it's it's uh, a default from YouTube now <laughs> okay uh the reason why i want to test something first is to make sure that we don't have any cast time with my current deck so my current decks right now is 93 so as you notice my ghost wave has cast time so we want to make sure that we don't have any cast time i believe uh the base uh decks right now is 125 so that we don't have any cast time so let's start adding uh, 17 so it's 110 and let's see if it's gonna 
uh, reduce the cast time. Still have that. Now we want to add some beef food because, of course, uh, we're gonna use beef food if we're gonna go uh, PvP. So right now I have a total of uh, 120 decks. Now I'm not taking into consideration uh, blessing because there are times that uh, you won't be buffed. Some people would love to uh, remove all of their equipments, but uh, I, I don't want to test it that way. Excuse me, I just ate. So the reason being is that uh, even though your items can be broken, your items can be uh, stripped, uh, you'd like to take advantage of your character fully equipped before you're engaging, right? So uh, for that scenario, I, I think it's very unlikely that you're going to engage with uh, your strip. And either way, you're not going to be dealing a lot of damage if your strip and your equipments and your stats are subpar that you, you are not making the threshold for the no cast for your uh, decks. So right now, 120 decks. Let's see. Uh, no cast time. So I think we can start with uh, 120 decks with food. So for me, for my uh, current stats, it's uh, plus 17. But we also want to make sure that uh, our soul breath doesn't have casting and then later on we're gonna test uh, smoke but let's leave it for 17 decks and 138 agi now luck uh, from what I've researched and from what uh, I've read from uh, the discord right I think you want to reach 267 luck so that you can take advantage of uh, the, the status or the attributes that helps your uh, what do you call this poison chance so if we go here i think traveler's note uh, click 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 <laughs> i think this one okay if we go to poison this one the table uh if we increase our luck right it increases the chance to inflict poison and it also increases the power or the duration of the poison uh, effect that uh, we deal to the enemy and this one is being counteracted by int and vit that's why if you notice it, it's very tough to inflict poison against uh, tanky characters uh, especially uh, Saint and then uh, support CM, support Doram because most of them has uh, a maximum uh, vit for their attribute and also they also build in, in for their heal and for some of their skills that's why we're, we're having a, a tough chance on inflicting uh, what do you call this uh, poison effect uh, on them poison debuff okay so 267 luck that's gonna be our goal right now I have 139 I don't want to calculate <laughs> 267 minus 139 I need 128 luck normally I uh, stay with low luck or this just 128 but sometimes I want to push some more and it's because of the rune and the mastering card that uh, we're, we're gonna use for our uh, garment but for now or uh, as a baseline you can start with whatever luck you can have to include uh, to, to reach 100 uh, sorry 267 uh, before that let's eat some luck food So instead of 128, we only need 118. Oh, I don't have any sounds. Hmm. All right. Okay. Now, what what's next? Uh, we have a, a lot of attribute points that we can distribute between strength and wit. For wit. I try to make it that my HP is around uh, 500k 
so that I have 2 MHP or more in uh, PvP. So, some people doesn't like to put uh, strength because uh, they, their reason is that there's not a lot of gain in strength or it, it doesn't really help you that much. But I beg to disagree because in high tier PvP, you want to squeeze that every ounce of damage that you can do, especially with how tanky the support characters are. So here, I'd start with uh, 100 bit. Right. You can see I have 470k, and let's add a uh, bit food. How much? Uh, 482, maybe 10 more. Uh, let's do 120 so I have a flat 200 bit. <laughs> okay, and then now I'll either dump it all to strength or let's put 102 for now because I want my stats divisible by 10. Personal preference, right? And then we can now build uh, our skills. That way we can still adjust if our dex needs more stat. If some of our skills will have some cast time. So let's start with this baseline of uh, attribute points uh, distribution. But I want you to remember that this uh, attribute point build is catered or uh, specific for my character. It doesn't mean that you need to follow this. This is just a guide. Uh, I, I want you to build your own based on your uh, character deposit, uh, equipment, and etc. Okay? Alright. We're gonna go back with our, what do you call this? Our stat uh, later. Uh, I just need to make sure that all of my skills doesn't have that uh, VCT that is affected by that, right? And let me just compare this a little, really quick. This one adds Adyen strength. This one Adyen strength. Just want to make sure it's not adding Dex to affect my cast time. Okay, no Dex, which is good, right? Okay, skill build. Uh, I think here we can all agree that this will be the base skills that we're gonna max out. Okay, this this three, and then you can either go with Venom Knife if you want to have uh, a crit dagger build, and you want to take advantage of. Oh, LD, come on! If you want to take advantage of. Venom Dagger, if you have a plus 15 Venom Dagger, okay? What it does is it gives you a chance to proc Venom Dagger and Venom Knife, okay? And at uh, max tier, your Venom Knife uh, skill is increased, and if you have level 10 Venom Knife learned, it will automatically cast Venom Knife at that level. So it's up to you how you want to uh, build your auto attack you can never go wrong with uh, ambush because it also allows you to stun the opponent right but for me I want to be a, a bit flexible and uh, there are times that I want to what do you call this uh, play around with a dagger because it inflicts a uh, poison and adds a lot of flexibility in my build so I'd go with Venom Knife, another source of damage and then for here I'd go uh, Pater Mastery Backsliding and Chad Poison this will be our base, okay? now you can either put your points to Venom Dart, okay, or 
You can put it to Sonic Blow. Okay. And then 5 on so Sonic Acceleration. Because it affects your Dark Illusion. Now when I say you can either put it here or just uh, use Venom Dark instead of Sonic Acceleration. It's because it's how you want to build your character. Okay. There are times at least 80% of the time that I don't see myself using dark illusion so it's really up to your preference if you're gonna use dark illusion okay if not then uh, you can take off some points uh, from your sonic acceleration now we need to check I, I guess we need to verify with Sir Idol if uh, cross impact make use of uh, sonic acceleration because if it doesn't make use of Sonic Acceleration, which uh, gives Sonic Blow 100% more damage, then just max your Sonic Blow. But as you can see here, Cross Impact, make use of your Sonic Blow to deal damage, right? That's why if you are using Dark Illusion, okay, then don't level up Venom Dark, okay? And just put 5 on Sonic Blow and 5 on Sonic Acceleration okay for me I don't uh, put much on Sonic Acceleration because I add Venom Dart because this adds another flexibility on my build if there are a lot of people that uh, uses some sort of shield we have a rune that bypasses the shield and Venom Dart gives you another stack of poison and that's another layer of uh, minus 25% defense. So, let's go here. What can I change? Let's just change this for now. Or maybe, let's just go here. Okay, the reason why I want to have Venom Dart is because of this rune. Is it refine, 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 refine a group. Okay. It ignores auto guard and parry. So we can uh, inflict uh, additional layer of poison uh, against knights, knight classes, right? I hope it, it, it also affects KE, would be nice, right? But it, it gives you another uh, layer of flexibility on your build. So if you ask me, I don't really rely on the damage of DI or Sonic Blow, so I'd rather go with uh, Venom Dart, especially that uh, I don't want to change uh, or I don't have any slots left on my Ymir, so I'll go with this one, okay? Another way you can do this if you want to be really flexible is that don't put any points in Sonic Blow and Venom Dart, and uh, you can max uh, double attack if you want to play with uh, daggers. Or maybe 5 here and 5 on TBP as we call it or Twin Blade uh, Penetration. For now, let's focus on uh, Sonic Blow okay, and Sonic Acceleration because it is this uh, a cookie cutter build. Okay? Now for uh, Assassin's Cross uh, skills, max this if you're using Qatar and then of course this. And then enhance hiding, assassination heart, and I'm gonna max assassination halo. The reason being is that if you have a RM in your party, then you can increase their crit, and also it increases your damage based on the soul. I think it's soul assassination room, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, soul assassination room. So the higher crit you have, the higher multiplier you can get that increases your crit damage, okay? If you don't want to use this rune, and I don't know why, <laughs> then feel free to just max your uh, assassination heart, and then maybe put 5 on your assassination halo. And then you'll go from there. Now for the breakthrough, 
it's pretty common really max this this and you have 10 points left if your ghost we build of course you max this but since we're katara build we want to max uh this one because it gives us uh, a bonus damage increase of one percent per level and we want to squeeze every ounce of damage raffle <laughs> No, 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 we want to be fair, B-Boy. <laughs> Off-shirt? Hey, I didn't agree for off-shirt. <laughs> okay. So, now that we have uh, this one set, let's go to the class 3 or skill 3 that we're all having problem the most because we don't have a lot of skill points to spare. But uh, initially, or uh, as my baseline, I'm always, I'm always going to max these two. The higher the chance, the better for me. Okay. But for the sake of conversation, uh, let's put this at ten, and uh, we'll discuss why. Okay. I'll always max these two regardless. I want the chance to inflict poison no matter what. Now, if, if you are confident enough with your uh, skill that you can utilize weapon blocking in MP, then go ahead and put 5 here. 5 is enough. But if you're having problems with, uh, web, with your uh, SP management in MP or 12 versus 12, then you don't need to put anything here. Okay? Do take note that in MP, you don't regen your uh, SP and you can't use uh, what you call this any recovery items and you need to rely uh, with your teammate now a full buff of death contract and prepare for elite will uh, deplete your SP pool and you don't have any SP left to cast soul breath I tried it <laughs> that's why uh, I'm elaborating what build we can use for MP on this skill 3. Now, some ca some people can argue or will argue that you can put 3 points here because uh, at level 2, you don't gain any SP, right? But uh, at level 3, you gain 2% max SP per second. But, I'd rather maximize my King of Chaos to inflict poison at a higher rate than have SP okay some people may use uh, what you call this stormy night back to counter the poison but uh, we also have a counter for that if we have antidote and you can build uh, your character so that you won't be inflicted by your own poison which is 170 resist that you need on your gears okay so Let's assume that uh, we're building our blade soul for MP. So if you're gonna ask me, I'm not gonna put anything on weapon block. And uh, mind you, this build will rely heavily on soul breath because you don't have any forms of uh, damage mitigation from weapon blocking. But it will save you the headache of uh, managing your SP. Sure, you can remove a lot of uh, skills from your prepare for leap and manage your SP, but uh, there are times that I'm having issues with my latency and I want to be as efficient as possible. And with a few hotkeys or hotbar uh, on my setup as much as possible. Okay, so if we're not gonna put it here, what would I use? Okay, I'm gonna max this. And I'm gonna put 5 on this. That leaves us uh, 20 points, right? I am going to max Poison Smoke because it reduces the speed uh, of the opponent by additional 20% and reduces their bit. For MP, our uh, role is to kill those Orb Holders. So we want all forms of CC, all forms of debuff that we can do uh, against our opponents. At level 10, it doesn't have that uh, movement speed debuff and it doesn't have that uh, minus bit. Okay? 
uh, at level 11, minus 4 vit and minus 4 uh, movement speed. And I know people will say, but they're wearing uh, Moonlight. People don't wear, uh, I mean, if you're a support, mostly, and if you're an orb holder, you're not wearing any, what do you call this, Moonlight card because it doesn't really help you. So that's one of the reasons why I max this, okay? And if they're not wearing Moonlight, right? And if they're wearing something else for their shoes or it's broken, then that's an additional one to two ticks of uh, poison damage because of the slow effect, right? So I'll definitely max this. Uh, Deeping Wound, I'm maxing it because we want that faster time to kill or the fastest time to kill. And the higher chance we can remove the buff from the opponent, the better our TTK or time to kill will be, right? Uh, I, I had some discussions with uh, some Blade Soul gurus. Uh, one of it is uh, Turbo, if you know Sir Turbo, he, he's a great uh, Blade Soul GX user. Too bad he quit for golf. He advised that uh, level 4 is enough, right? But then again, those are advice or those are guide. And uh, I, I want to build it in such a way that I can remove the opponent's buff at a really fast uh, percentage. Level 4 isn't bad. Level 4 is 48%. It's like 50-50, right? But I, I want to increase my chance knowing my ROM luck isn't that good. So <laughs> I'll go for something that will uh, make it better for me. Now, how many points do we have left? I think there's a joke. I don't think it's 35. So let me refresh this. Oh, it's 35. Okay. Now, with uh, the upcoming buff for Antidote, I think we can settle with 3. Okay? Reason being is that uh, after the buff, I think the maximum uh, duration of Antidote will be 10 seconds from 5. But right now, since we don't have the buff for Antidote, let's max this. And the reason being is that people counter our poison by wearing uh, the Stormy Knight back, which is a, a, a pain in the ass, right? So what it does is it reflects your uh, abnormal status effects to the opponent. And since we love to inflict poison, right? We are uh, susceptible with uh, the effect of snowstorm wings. That's why I highly encourage that you build a level 5 antidote so that when you're attacking those uh, tanky characters, you cast your antidote and you have 9 seconds uh, to try and kill uh, that orb holder, which coincides with your, uh, what do you call this, with your soul breath. Your soul breath has 8 seconds I believe, by default. Oh, 5 seconds. I have 8-9 eight, eight, seconds because of my rune. So that uh, perfectly lines up with your uh, soul breath. So level 5 this. So what do we have left? We have 10 left, okay? Now this will ultimately will go down with how you play uh, the game. You can either put five here and one here, and then you can put four in here, okay? Some people can go here and put one here, but that's too much skills or too many buttons for me to press, <laughs> okay? And like I've said, uh, uh, from my play testing, I rarely use Dark Illusion, okay? So that gives me uh, more points for Haluok, okay? And I can reserve some points in weapon blocking and then we'll just not include it in my prepare for elite or will not use it while in MP. So it's really up to you. Some people uh, can argue that in map 3 of MP, Dark Illusion is really good as escape mechanism 
or as an engagement mechanism but I really don't find myself using this a lot right or maybe because my latency is that bad that's why uh, I don't really use dark illusion okay for me I'm gonna go with uh, 10 hollow walk or uh, 10 hollow walk and then a 5 way from blocking but if you want to go with uh, cross impact you can go with something like this and then again for every level of dark illusion the range of your dark illusion uh, goes farther okay so let's say the build that I want to do is dark illusion build okay let's start with one From here, I need to go, oops, <laughs> I need to go at this far, right, to cast my Dark Illusion. So this, this point, I think it's this point. Okay. If I level my Dark Illusion for another level, right? From here, I can cast it another uh, block. not noticeable let's go with level 3 there you go and at level 5 you can definitely see the difference so adjust the number of uh, skill points you want to invest on dark illusion right see how far that is from here so initially at level 1, the distance is something like this, 1, 2, 3, 3, I think there's 3 meters in uh, ROM, and in uh, level 5 of uh, Dark Illusion, it's 5 meters. So definitely adjust it based on your playstyle. So assuming uh, I'm not going to use weapon blocking, right? I'm okay with level 5. Uh, I practice my game style to use level 5 hollow walk. I disengage when it's gone. So this is how I'm gonna build my blade soul. Okay. Alright. Now, now that we have this build, I don't think uh, we, we need to discuss uh, blade soul. I'm gonna assume that everyone has maximized their uh, fourth job skills. Now for skill slot, okay, poison cast for me, and then uh, smoke, and then backslide here. If you don't see yourself using uh, poison cast a lot, you can have your uh, stay calm here. For the second one, you have this two. Some people doesn't want to use. Uh, soul sacrifice. I don't know why and I know it's tedious, but there are times that you have a lot of chance to cast this Maybe it's a win more uh, Condition for you or a win more skill, but it definitely helps. So Soul sacrifice sacrifice all your souls each soul can increase your int by 10 and critical by 5 This is a huge damage increase uh, partner with uh, the rune the soul assassination rune so right now my base uh, crit is 381. If I cast Soul Sacrifice, the amount of crit that you'll deal will definitely, or, or you'll gain, will definitely boost your damage. And from what is it, 320 to 380? <laughs> From 300, I have 520. That's a lot. So, uh, I think I have 14. 14 souls. Yeah, 14. And then, how much does it give? Oh, crit by 5. So, 14 times 5. 70 crit. That's a lot. And then, you can use it as a multiplier. For, oops. Oh, it works here. Nice to know. Ah. Uh, you can 
have your crit damage increase based on your crit, which is 520 minus uh, your enemy's crit resist, and you have a chance to zero out their crit. So that's 520, which I have, right? 520 times 0.43. That's 223 crit damage if my calculation or my understanding of the formula is correct, right? Okay, so I'll, I'll leave it to you if you want to use Soul Sacrifice. I definitely use it, okay? I want to squeeze as much damage as I can do when I attack someone, right? Uh, Legal Beagle. Why max assassination halo over assassination heart? Uh, like I've said, uh, it helps you with uh, your crit here. So 20, uh, I think I gained, how much? How much is this? And then again, this is my build because uh, I have an RM with me or a, a RM class teammate with me. And that increases 20 of his crit. And we all know that the meta currently in Yo-Yo, even in MP, people build, build crit rest. So 20 crit is a, a huge help for our teammate. And 20 crit times uh, 4 point, point 43. That's additional 8%. Uh, 8% 8 crit damage. And of course, you'll gain more here, right? 15% uh, damage, but it increases your crit. It increases your teammate's uh, crit, so it's not a bad uh, skill to invest on. So if your team composition doesn't have any RM or anyone that can utilize the uh, additional crit here, then by all means go with Assassination Heart, okay? Because it gives you more crit damage, raw crit damage than you will have for Assassination's Halo. What are the guys talking about? A raffle. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Okay. Oh, uh, what's next? So we're done with the scale. Uh, any question? Oh, yeah. I didn't notice that we have <laughs> we have people here. Okay. Uh, okay. We're we're done with the skills unless uh there are some questions. Yeah, the BGM. Uh, I'm excited for N Walker of uh, FF14. Can't wait. It's really nice. Okay. Uh, okay. Now that we have the skills, okay. Let's make sure that we don't have any cast time. Dark contract. We we, we can't do anything about it. Let's just check. Skill cooldown, 3 seconds, there's no additional cast time. Soul Sacrifice, cast time is 3.70. Hmm. I don't have Dex food right now. So from 3.70, let's see if my cast time will decrease, okay? So it did, right? So, I think 120 is still good for me. Hmm, let's equip some... Let's equip a card that will increase my dex. However, what? what? Do I have dex here? No, I don't have dex. So, what I'm trying to do is, I, I, I want to see if I, if I add more dex, if the cast time of uh, Soul Sacrifice, because I don't know what's the fixed cast time of uh, soul sacrifice, right? So let's equip this bracelet because it gives me 12 decks, right? Let's see if it decreases the cast time. It's still four seconds. So safe to say our decks uh, can just stay with 120. 120 at least with my current deposit. Okay, 120 is enough. Okay. And let's remove that because... Okay, now we can play around with uh, our stats, right? I have 952 flea right now. Do I want to spend 
200 points to increase another 13. There are some people that will because uh, I've seen people having 1,200 fleet and it's justifiable. It's, it's just that for me, it's not. <laughs> okay? So... Did, did it save? Oh, it didn't. Okay, if you're having SP problems, go for it. Uh, I wouldn't suggest though. <laughs> I'd rather go with uh, luck. It increases our crit. It increases our crit damage. Crit increases our crit damage because of soul assassination rune. And then luck increases our crit damage. Let's see. Does it show? Oh, it doesn't show. But luck increases our crit, which then increases our damage because of the soul assassination rune. So I'll leave it to you. Uh, I'd probably go with luck for more damage. Or if you lack a uh, crit, I doubt you'll lack crit. Or uh, I'll just go uh, with uh, strength. So that I can flex uh, the attack <laughs> if I want to. Maybe I'll go. Let's see. 10 here. Maybe 10 here. Oh, this is perfect. At least for me. Maybe 7. 9 because. Look at my critical, right? After adding another one, it increases by one, so I'll go with this. And it it, it also increases my luck, my crit damage. Now I have 20 points to spare. I can either add it for deck, uh, into decks. That way, if you get uh, quagmire, uh, etc., you can still insta cast things. But again, it depends on your game style. I rely heavily on my soul breath, so that uh, I'll be immune to CC. So. 20 attribute points bit mm, I'd probably go in really int isn't bad or I, I'd go dex it's really up to you how much SP will it add me <laughs> for for the sake of experimentation let's add one in how much SP will I gain 1794 oh is that bad uh, I'll just dump it to in but this is not my final build. I I'm gonna min max it based on how much SP I consume when I use uh, Prepare for Elite, right? So it's gonna change. Those are just my suggestions, okay? Then we can add side here. Alright, uh, skill bar. My first skill bar is the uh, most. Or the skill board that I use most of the time. Okay. Why do I have uh, Ghost Wave here? Okay. The reason being is that I think I ex I've explained it in uh, my previous video, right? Normally, I start with uh, Dark Contract, Soul Breath, and then I start attacking, or I start go, and then I can use Ghost Wave to have one SD. And with this build that relies on uh, SD's execute, because if you look at my build, I don't have hit, 399 hit. Then I just need one soul, one soul to cast SD and to kill the opponent. Right? Again, you start with. It's easier like this. With Soul Breath, you have no poison, you can't cast. You weave in one, one ghost wave, so that uh, you'll gain one soul to cast SD, okay? And that's enough to trigger the execute of the second wave. Again, it ignores flee, it ignores shield, right? So combo is, you go in with soul breath, you attack, you weave in one ghost wave, you have one soul for your execute, okay? And why don't I have... Huh. Why 
Why is my SD not showing? Ah, uh, anyway. So that's the reason why I have Ghost Wave on my hotkey. It's there for the instant uh, soul. It's not 100% uh, soul. It only gives you a chance to gain a soul. You have a 30% chance to gain a soul. However, from my uh, time playing Ghost uh, Wave for my Blade Soul, almost always I have a soul. Oh, there you go, 100%. But you need, uh, I think you need to hit in order for you to gain a soul. But mostly our target have low flee, okay? So. Uh, that's a question. <laughs> Send pick for a different angle. PVP internals build. Uh, let, let's uh, elaborate that later. What relics would you recommend for AASD? Um, let's discuss that as we discuss our uh, what do you call this? Our gears, okay? Oh, I agree with you, uh, Elijah. Uh, that's why I'm a proponent of high high strength build, right? And again, this is not my final build. I'm just show showcasing. Uh, a flea build utilizing these gears now for flea build this is what i would uh recommend right at least for the gacha equipped this is highly or uh the top gear that you want to get for a flea build because it gives you 10 percent flea and you want to have uh this tail because it gives you flat five percent more flea and then get some good enchants with it high flea or max HP or PDI, it's up to you. Or can we get poison rest? I don't think we can get poison rest on uh, the right hand side. Okay, let's start with uh, offhand. Okay, crit build. What we're gonna discuss here so that we, we can uh, save in the description or a comment in the video, we can put a timestamp. The build we're going to discuss based on the skill build and stat will rely on auto attack. To deal more damage okay and not SD to deal more damage for this build it will utilize your AA as your main source of damage and SD as your execute because I'm getting a lot of questions where how should I build my uh, blade soul with SD with auto attack again it depends on how you build your character okay so for this one, we're going to utilize auto attack with SD as your execute. We're not going to rely on SD's damage, although if you have high attack, high ignore death, then yeah. Okay, uh, first and foremost, we want Vink. I think this is the best in slot when it comes to crit damage. Reason being is that it gives you 20 crit, additional flea, okay. Why do I have it? Anyway, let, let's ignore the cards for now. So, and it also gives you penetration. What are our alternatives? We we can have a uh, skeleton razor because it gives you melee attack and then uh, additional melee damage for every find from uh, plus eight. So that's a total of eight uh, damage increase, right? And what else? Uh, you can also make use of Shadow Guard. Yeah, believe me or not, you can make use of this if you are trying to uh, min max your flea. It gives you 20 flea. Okay? And then you can also, uh, what do you call this? Well, you can't really utilize the <laughs> this one because it's when attacked. Or I thought, I thought it's when you're attacking, right? The defense isn't really here. We mainly want this for the flea if you're trying to reach 1200 uh flea i don't encourage it but if you want it for internal pvp yo-yo etc the meta is uh hit versus flea then you may want to take advantage of this one okay what else um, you can 
believe me or not, you can also utilize uh, meteorite buckler. But then again, it depends on your build. Maybe more of it, right? And then adjusting of uh, some of your enchants here. You can uh, you can definitely use meteorite buckler or uh, giant armor shield. It, it really depends on your gameplay. So, Rosa, not really because again, the focus of my build, the build that we're discussing right now for the gear uh, discussion is auto attack. Even though it gives you uh, attack here, <laughs> attack 3%, the main focus of Rosa is uh, your ignore death. It only helps your SD and not your uh, auto attack. Okay? So, let's test the damage of uh, those. Should we test it first? Yeah, let's test it first. Um. I wonder if I, sh if I should test it first or discuss. Yeah, let's test it first. Okay. Uh, okay, let's use Death Gash for now. And then we can change the weapon later when we go to the weapon side. Okay. Now. Let's just check. 90% medium demi human. We're, we're trying to simulate uh, PvP, okay? And of course we can, but uh, we're doing our best to simulate it. So first, let's see the damage of Vink, okay? To damage 68,000, right? Now let's change to skeleton brazer. Do you call this? Yeah, skeleton brazier. So from 64k to 57k, right? But if you have a uh, skeleton brazier and not Vinx, then of course <laughs> you make do of what you have, right? And what else? Uh, from 64k to 57k, then let's try this. 52k so those are the damage uh, of the different offhand that uh, you can use for this build right and I'll just enhance this just because okay right and then what else can we use meteorite buckler it gives you HP it gives you additional Physical damage reduction, right? And medium, I mean, from the medium size reduction. So 52k, same as the Shadow Guard, right? Meteorite Buckler is not a bad alternative if you want your GX. BS to be a bit more tanky. I don't know how you're going to build it because usually you're just gonna die. <laughs> and uh, again, maybe it depends on how you build your team, right? I think it will be the same damage as uh, our giant armor shield 52k. Yeah, 52k. So for damage, the offhand we'd like to have Vinked as much as possible. Okay. All right. So, Wink Bracelet is the best offhand for crit AA build. Okay. For armors, uh, really for me, hands down for damage is Ninja Clothes. Right. So right now, let's just remove the card. That way we don't have any damage modifier on the cards and we can test different armors, okay? For the card, oh, for offhand and chant, okay? If you if you are on flea build, <coughs> excuse me, flea build, then definitely go for flea, okay? Go for flea and chant. But uh, for me, I want more damage, damage, damage. Practice how you utilize, uh, what do you call this? Soul Breath, 
and make use of that nine seconds to deal your damage okay so again your enchants will vary greatly on how you build your character because uh, if we want to utilize SD then of course our enchants will be heat and uh, flee okay all right for armors uh, what are our alternatives okay we have uh, ninja clothes golden song I think it's the best in slot for us uh, we have perseverance armor you can even use uh, go this comet warfare we can use uh, God's blessing we can use uh, staunch so that uh, you can uh, be protected against fear okay which is gonna be uh, part of the meta in PvP no matter what we do okay now right now we're gonna test the best damage that uh, an armor can give us okay let's start with uh, Cold Knight Song okay this is morale 4 so it has strength 7 so there will be a variance in in the damage but I I'll leave it up to you to decide which one is the best for you when it comes to damage and cost efficiency uh, ratio okay so 68k for uh, Cold Knight Song okay and then let's test Staunch is also morale 4 with fire elf card it doesn't affect the damage so from 68k 61k let's type it here do we need to type no i'm too lazy so 68k from cold knight song to 61k and then for perseverance my enchant is i think it's hp oh it's been lagging oh flea hit <laughs> 68 61 63 so from damage perspective it's cold night song perseverance and then staunch and then what other armors uh, we can use if you want to go defensive let's use comet warfare right 67 that's uh, 68 63 61 to 56 i think it's gonna be the same with uh god's blessing yeah and then you can use tyrannical if you have that if you're coming from rm you want to try i want to use this one okay from 56k 62k so from a damage perspective right uh full night song 68k damage per se 63k oh someone type it things rock <laughs> chosen 61k and then tyrannical 62k which is what we have right now and then comet and god's blessing 56k so i leave that to you okay definitely uh, nothing beats a cold night song when it it comes to damage okay and of course i'm using hermit uh so let's see the damage if i'm not using hermit okay let's say i'm using another this one because it this comes close to my hermit's uh intent 65k without the combo with our hermit which is additional 10% crit damage and 1000 HP okay all right so that's it for armors 
For garment. Okay, what can we use for garment? For garment, we can use cloud undershirt. Okay. Or we can use. Where's that? Oh, here. Is it this one? Yeah. Uh, AC or White Duke's Mantle now? We call it Mantle Mantle. Uh, we can use this. We can also use Death Cat Cape if you want more HP. If you want to be tanky. I'm not sure if I really want to build my Assassin tanky. Maybe you can auto attack, just inflict poison, and be tanky enough to uh, survive the damage and disengage. And then we can also. This is. No, not this one. I think it's this one. If you want attack speed, and it also increases our auto attack damage, but this one also increases auto attack damage. Okay, so let's test the different damage that. Uh, our garment can give us I'm gonna remove a uh, damage modifier okay what does it do okay the curse of uh, Nolan rolls <laughs> okay how much damage do we have right now so 62k for Undershirt, okay. Let's try Ancient Cape. But this has. Let's just use this. Okay. From 62k to 55k. Let's chat it, uh, type it again. Oh, undershirt. 62k. AC 55k What else can we test? Uh, I think this blue eve cape, right? Blue eve is 59k And then Death Cat Cape. I think that's the last one we can use, right? I don't think we'd like to use uh, this one. Advanced Survival uh, Mantle. So let's use this one. Death Cat Cape. It's 54k, but then again, it increases your HP. How much HP do you have now? <laughs> 540k. So... 540k There you go Undershirt gives us the best damage because it increases our crit damage it gives auto attack and then AC AC although the attack damage isn't that high but then again it gives you ignore defense so that can come in play and complement your uh, AA build with a focus more or heavily on SD damage. So, but for crit, crit auto attack with focus on auto attack, we want undershirt. Okay, now let's go to shoes. I think this is this where a, a lot of people are wondering which one is the best, and you'll be surprised with uh, the result. Uh, I thought that uh, it's gonna be uh, little fairy slippers or grandma wolf, but let's just test. For shoes, it depends on how you want to build for the enchant. I guess for the enchant, it uh, what do you call this? It will vary based on how you want to build your character. If you want flee, then of course go with flee enchant. If you want hit, go with hit enchant. If you want damage, go with PDI, go with uh, sharp, go with armor, armor break, the penetration one, right? So those are the chance. 
we'll just discuss the enchants later as uh, a general that way uh, we, we can focus on the uh, equipment okay so here I, I'm gonna do my best and compare the different uh, shoes or boots that we can use okay so let's start with grandma wolf okay my grandma wolf okay i think it's good it gives you uh melee physical damage right and then ignore that four percent for the tier up so right now if i'm using uh grandma wolf or a little fear sleepers 54k and then I'm trying to be no let's not use this because my enchant here is okay so this is comparable right so from 54k oh, it's so laggy 55k 1k difference right or maybe less than because it's I think it's 54,700 but for the sake of simplicity uh, grandma wolf or 54k right rune boots 55k alright and then lastly because I can't recommend any other shoes unless again you want to be tanky, right? Uh, I think this advanced sack teddy, right? 55,522, which is higher than the room boots. Let's just say 55.5, okay? Just to give it an edge, right? So, uh, one build that's also becoming a bit uh, popular, or maybe not a lot of people uh, using it, is the use of crit death. And that directly affects your crit damage. So, if you're going to ask me, and if I'm going to build something really specific and it's auto attack, I'm gonna use advanced sack teddy shoes because it gives me the best damage that I can get. Oh, it's 55.7 here. So it's AST. Uh, rune boots. Relax guys, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> We're still on the left hand side. We'll, we'll get on the weapon and then <laughs> You can just scan my video to uh, check the damage as you go. I just don't want to skip it and jump here until we, we get the best possible combination for this build, right? So right now, the best in slot when it comes to crit auto attack is rune boots when it comes to raw damage. But then again, this dummy doesn't have any crit death. So your damage will change once you attack uh, an actual uh, opponent in PvP. And uh, I'm willing to bet that uh, Advanced Sack Teddy will give us the highest damage out of the three shoes when it comes to crit auto attack. I do need to take a quick break. It's... I'm sweaty. <laughs> Hold on. I'll be back.
so hot. Okay, so we're done with the boots. What's the temp outside? <sighs> checking the temp. Hold on, guys. I'm checking if I can open my window. 76. Not bad. have to seriously play their own game plan what what the heck okay oh i'm using a different garment for what um want do we want to test it again yeah yeah, yeah. let's test it again um it, it, it was really hot that's why okay so that it's a bit quick i'm gonna Slot it here. Oh, this one. Okay. All right. Let's start with. Little Theory, 62. Let's record it now. What do you call this? What's the base one? Let's just say Little Theory. 62.8K. Let's just make it 62.9 for the sake of simplicity. And then Rune Boots, 64013. I forgot the name. Support K. And then Advanced Act Teddy. 63. 0.6 K. Alright. Then again, I'm gonna put my bet that Advanced Sack Teddy is a uh, way better than Rune Boots when it comes to raw damage because this dummy probably doesn't have any crit death, uh, what they call this, crit death uh, stat, right? What guns? <laughs> okay, uh, cards in garments, okay. Let's discuss the cards later. Let's just focus on the gears for now. That way we have one pass. Or yeah, that that way we have one pass. One just for the gears. And then the next segment will be for uh, cards. Okay? So I'll, I'll let you decide. 62k for Little Theory. Now the pros and cons for Little Theory, although it has the least damage when it comes to auto attack. From our testing with Ghost Wave and then Soul Depravity, it has the edge because of that additional 4% ignore death. That's 4% increase in your damage for SD and uh, Ghost Wave. For an all-around build, like if you want to build multiple classes, then I would suggest using a Rune Boots or what do you call this? Huh. St. Mary's Cloth Shoes. All around, this is good. It's attack and then uh, bonus healing, move speed. But it's a bit expensive. So price-wise, the cheapest I think is Little Fairy Slippers. Yeah. Boar Bristle or Advanced Act Teddy, it's specialized on crit damage. So if you have an opponent that is building crit dam uh, crit death, which is definitely on their uh, runes, small runes, and probably on their 
uh, enchants because of uh, armor enchants crit rest it comes with vit and uh, crit death then this will be king for damage alone okay all right uh i'm gonna go with this one moving forward okay you know what let's just use this because Little Fairy is a bit more uh, viable for most people because it can be used by different classes and I know this is specialized so let's just use Little Fairy now let's test accessory right what are the different accessories that uh, we can use now let's start with Crit Ring, okay? Why Crit Ring? Crit Ring helps improve our damage because of the Soul Assassination Room. It gives you additional crit. How much in total? Uh, four, 6, 4, 4, uh, 14, plus 6, 20 critical, and then 140 attack and 4% attack, right? And it's cheap compared to the next one, which is, I think, the best. Uh, Hermit's Bundle, it also combos with your uh, Cold Knight Song. And then, it gives you melee physical attack, melee physical damage, and then additional crit damage if you combo it with the Cold Knight, like we said. The Formless Monster and damage to angels is meh, it's just a bonus, but this gives us the best damage that uh, we can have. Okay? And then there's also Fib or Fading Fading Tear. Okay. What it does, it, it gives you additional crit damage 100% if uh, Berserker Rage is triggered. Okay. Cost wise, the cheapest is Crit Ring. And then we also have Ring of Contract because it gives you raw attack. So we'll, we'll test this, okay? It's just that this is so expensive. How much is... Oh, it's cheaper now. Okay, you can also use different, uh, what do you call this? Accessories, plus 15. I encourage you to use plus 15 because of that uh, hidden uh, bonus. This one, if you need more hit, some people may laugh at you because uh, you're using this, but hey it's more hit if you just want hit because your damage is already uh, at the threshold where you can kill people you need hit dog servant is not bad it's 12 hit right and uh, choose the best enchant for you uh, SB4 or hit depends on how you want it okay you can also use uh, bright moon as an entry it doesn't give as much, gives you dex 8, but you really want the uh, refine attack bonus from plus 15. Not recommended. You can go with uh, survival ring. You can add flea here for the enchant, flea hit, gives you more HP. Okay, so let's start with uh, crit ring. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to equip int ring here, that way it's easy for us to switch uh accessories now for my hermit bundle i'm gonna use uh, the one with the low pdi and then fading tier i need to make sure that okay let's just use yeah anaconda is fine we need to change this Wanna use mm, smoky. We're we're trying to make a baseline and make sure that all of them are dealing the same damage, right? So I'm I'm, I'm gonna remove uh that uh cards that will modify their damage. Do we want to test survival ring? Is anyone interested in survival ring? I think people will be interested with uh ring of loyalty. I don't mind testing this. It's not that good, but what the heck let's test it and then let's remove the card okay 
this time. Whew. Okay. So what we have right now is the crit ring, right? I need to unequip this. Put it here so it's easier. Okay, baseline. Here's our baseline, okay? Forty K damage and then crit ring fifty K. Oops. Hermit bundle. 53.4k. Fib. Hmm. Because sometimes it doesn't give you the max, right? So what I'm going to do first is make sure all of these are enhanced. See, it's only 70. Why is it only 70? Yeah, what are you doing with my enhanced? Okay. Uh, what have we tested? Crit ring and then hermit. Right? And then we go with fib. Fib is 46.8k. And 55k, 55.4 if it triggers, okay? Fib, 46k, right? 44.6. That's right. 46.8k. And uh, 55.4k. Pro. Alright. And then let's try Ring of Contract, okay? 49k uh dog's tooth is 45.9 and then ring of loyalty ah oh, i didn't update it Ring of Loyalty, 46.5. Oops. Good job, Onin. Dog Servant, right? It's Dog Servant. 45.9k. And Ring of Loyalty, 46.5k. The enchants, of course, it, it's different, right? I can't have uh, the enchants the same. <laughs> it's just, it's just not feasible. I don't, I don't think uh, I'm, I'm that lucky to have uh, all the gears have the same enchants, right? So I'm gonna show you the enchants that we have. That way, uh, you can make a decision for yourself, right? We use this fissure beam is. SB3 with 1% PDI, Ring of Loyalty, uh, SB2 with 3.2, I use my lower PDI Hermit's Bundle, okay, and then for Dog Servant, we don't have SB4, it's just PDI 3.2, uh, for Fading Tier or Fib, it's SB4, 1% PDI, ROC, SB4, PDI 3.8. So knowing all of those enchants, right? Ring of Contract gives me a... No, ROC. No, no, uh, we go here. Crit Ring, 50k damage. Hermit's Bundle, 53.4k. Fib is 46.8k. If it, it doesn't proc. But once it procs, it's 55.4k. Which is the highest... And then Ring of Contract is 49k. 
Dog Servant is 45.9, Ring of Loyalty 46.5k, which may go higher or lower depending on your armor, right? The reason why I want to test uh, Dog Servant is because there are some classes that comes from uh, our farmer class, which is uh, the Stellar Hunter. So they can make use of that uh, accessory as a starting point. And then again, Dog Servant is not bad. I, I don't think it's bad. Because you can utilize the hit, the additional hit from Dog Servant because it's Dex plus 12, right? That's 12 additional hit. And then you can enchant your uh, Dog Servant for 18 plus hit. So that's a 30 hit just from one accessory. So it really depends on how you want to build your characters. Do you like bull, dude? What's bull? What's bull? I don't know what's bull. <laughs> okay. Now, what we're going to test is the best combination of uh, accessories. That And uh, I, I, want, I want to show you why I came up with uh, the Hermit's Bundle and Crit Ring. Okay. Okay, so let's start with uh, Hermit's Bundle as our base, okay? I think I need to equip this first. So that we can have this as our base. But I need to change cards again just to, you know. Alright. So let's start with fifty K, okay, with uh, a base of uh, Hermit's Bundle. And then if we add another Hermit's Bundle, it's gonna be sixty three point eight K. Each Hermit plus Hermit sixty three point eight K. Permit plus Fib, 57k, and 67k proc, right? Hermit plus Ring of Contract, 59.8k, it didn't, what the heck? because someone's hitting them guys what are you doing <laughs> okay uh let's type it hermit hermit 63.8k hermit plus fib 57k and then 67k proc right and then hermit plus ROC what's this 59k 59.8k and then hermit plus dog servant 56k Hermit plus Ring of Loyalty 56.7 and then Hermit plus ROC 61k right hmm interesting now that my Hermit plus Hermit is 63.8k Hmm. What's missing from my variable? Anyway, 
I guess from the data that we have now, from the testing and the equipment that we have now, right? I think my actual build, it's really ROC and uh, Hermit. Okay. From the build that we have now, damage-wise, we have two Hermits giving us the best damage, right? And the second one is uh, Hermit plus a Ring of Con... Uh, Critical ring. It should be crit ring. Hermit plus crit ring. Two one king. Uh, okay. Hermit and hermit sixty three point eight k, but it will cost you one point eight b per accessory, and the closest that you can have is hermit plus crit ring, which is sixty one k. Second one, or the highest, really, if it procs, is Hermit plus Fib, but the base damage is 57k. Okay, So if you want to really maximize or reach that highest DPS that you can get, then go with Fib. However, Fib is 1.7b. Okay. Oh, 1.3b. So that's 3B for two accessories. Hermit and ROC, it's 1.9 and 1.7B. It's only 59.8K. And then Hermit plus DS, it's 56K. Hermit and Ring of Loyalty is almost the same as uh, Dog Servant. And then Hermit plus ROC, which is the cheapest right now, 61K. Our, uh, Ring of Contract, is how much is this 465 uh, K uh, 465 M or 466 M so if you're trying to plan or budget uh, you can go with hermit plus ROC so damage wise I think with the current build that I have it's hermit and hermit but the build I'm using it's hermit plus ROC so then again you need to keep in mind that your damage will vary and you can't just use the data that I have to reflect the same damage on your character. I'm just trying to showcase the difference in damage that we have with this different combination of skills. Okay, so what's next? Um... Let's try with two ring of contract. Uh, crit ring. Oh my god. <laughs> my other ring of contract. I won't equip any cards. I won't equip. Uh, I won't enhance it. Okay. So let's start with uh, two crit rings. Hermit without ninja clothes. Oh. We, we, we'll try it little by little. Let's try with uh, Ring of Contract first, okay? Ah, uh, Crit Ring. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, Crit Ring. We're gonna try the different combination of uh, accessories. So for two Crit Rings, 60. 8k 60.8k and then I'm not gonna try Hermit's Bundle because well let's try it whatever 64k no, I don't want to use this data because I have a different base crit ring. Okay? We'll just use the one from here, one, this one, which is Hermit plus crit ring 61k. Okay? So it's close. Uh, crit plus fit, 56k, and when it procs. the prop there you go 66.5 prop uh, 
Alright, uh, and then Crit Ring plus ROC. In 9.7k, Dog Servant 55.5, and then 56.5. All right. Okay. So these are the different combination for crit ring. Moving forward, I'm not gonna test. Should we test? I think dog servant has a niche for the additional hit, right? It doesn't really help that much with the damage. But for uh, I I'm trying to include it for those players that will be coming from uh, our farmer class which is the SH right but uh, it doesn't really deal that much we want dog servant for the hit that is when you're trying to mean max your hit to reach 11,000 uh, sorry 1100 to 1200 hit okay given all the enchants are perfect alright uh, we're done with crit ring we'll make use of Uh, Ring of Contract as our base, okay. So Ring of Contract. Ring of Contract plus what's this? Ring of Loyalty. It's 55.7k. ROC plus Dog Servant. Five zero nine two. Okay. Now, uh, Cinco is asking. Ring of contract plus. So from fifty six k. Look at that. It doesn't proc that much. Maybe I'm just unlucky. I have a shitty luck. And it still is not proccing for me. What the heck? Come on, proc. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> it doesn't want to proc. Where is this the proc? Oh, there you go. 66.4k. And then last is Hermit. 63.8. Is this the same one? No, 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 no. I, I don't want to test this because the, the data will be muddled. I used a different uh, hermit earlier. Different enchant. So, Cinco, when you're asking, right? You were asking earlier. Uh, ROC plus Fib, 66.4k. If it procs, 56k base. Okay. I just tried it. Alright, what's next? Um, we tried ROC. I think we tried everything. Oh, we haven't tried. Uh, okay, let's try with. Do we want to try with Fib? Okay, let's try. No, I don't want to try with Fib. There's. So much RNG involved. I think the data that I have uh, presented in the stream should be enough for you guys to decide which one is best for you, cost cost wise, right? But if you're if you're trying to uh, min max really and doesn't care about uh, cost, then from our testing, it's Hermit and Hermit, right? Sixty three point eight k. If you don't want to rely with uh, the Fibs proc. However, if you want to rely with uh, Fibs proc, then it has the highest potential. Hermit 
and uh, FIB combined with 60-70 damage. How long the proc for it's 3 seconds plus 1 plus 1 and additional 1 6 6 seconds right 1 4 plus 5 1 4 plus 10 1 4 plus 15 and then base 3 seconds 6 seconds it's not bad but it has to proc you've seen earlier that it's it's not proccing as much for me look at that how many attacks have I done right now? Would this be enough if I'm dealing 63k damage, right? For two Hermits. Compared to 57k. So that's around 6k difference in about... How many attacks have, have we done there? Probably 10 attacks? Is it worth it? Maybe? But what if it, it didn't proc for the duration of your... Uh, soul breath and you need to disengage so it really is up to you okay we're done with uh, the accessories right and then since the damage is hermit versus hermit we're gonna use that okay we're gonna use two hermit where are my hermits so laggy Okay, we're gonna use this one because this is the most consistent damage, highest damage that we can do, 63.8k. Now, let's go with uh, weapon. For the weapon, huh, I need to remove the card from my weapon. This is attack. Let's use this one. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm making sure that there are no other damage modifier because we're gonna compare at least try to because their enchants are different right now uh, we're gonna compare death gash and assassin's jewel okay so what are the main difference between the two Death Gash gives us more damage increase, right? A total of uh, 21% and gives you uh, attack speed 30% if it procs. Now, Assassin's Jeweler gives us uh, crit plus 15, crit damage plus 30, additional crit damage per refine, okay? And then it gives you an effect of crit damage enhance that lasts for 5 seconds and gives you additional 10% crit damage. Okay, so this is like 45% base and then additional 10%, 55%, right? And also it gives you increased damage against poison targets, 20%. <clears throat> and if it's refined 10 plus 10, additional crit damage 10% it's just a whole lot a whole slew of uh, benefits when when you're uh, focused on auto attack right then the auto crit damage enhanced has been improved here additional 3% uh, increased chance of gaining crit damage enhanced so I don't know the base formula here or the base chance for crit damage enhanced, but it adds an additional 3% here. And then it adds an additional 8% auto attack damage at plus 15. 
Now I know by default my Assassin's Jewel will deal more damage or on paper at least because it has SB4 and PDI. But uh, let's test it nonetheless. Okay. So 72k, 73.9 because of the crit damage enhanced, right? Okay, okay, what happened? What happened? Okay, 72k. AJ with. Now it's just gonna proc, right? <laughs> then without the crit damage in hands it's 72.7 cat paw i don't have cat paw if you can gift it to me i'll gladly test it for you <laughs> i can only give information based on what i have uh, i know there's a lot of discussion where you can use, uh, I think, Cat Paw, right? Because it gives you penetration. I just don't have it to give you an informed uh, opinion of uh, the equipment. Where's the Cat Paw? It's this one, right? Yeah, it gives you 6% penetration. But I'm not gonna build it I don't find uh, an extra use for it because if I really need that penetration then uh, I can make use of uh, my uh, oracle mirror What's my oracle mirror to get that uh, additional penetration if I, I really want to right? okay Uh, all right, let's switch to Death Gash. Okay, so highest damage we can do with uh, Assassin's Jewel if it procs. It's so shitty for me not right now, so let's just settle with 72.7k. Assassin's Jewel 72.7 and then 63.8k. The 65k earlier is because of the lingering effect of the Assassin's Jewel. So that gash gives you 63.8k. Then again, uh, I have SB4, right? However, that gash, if we calculate this, I think it's the PDI, right? Hundred seventy-six. And 69.3. Heck. Let me just take note. So my base damage 176 and PDI. I want to check if the bug has been fixed. Or maybe not. Uh, damage increase PDI is 69.3 now if we check this that the total damage increase that we can get is 23% right 10 uh, no 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 uh, 10 plus 5 plus 3 18 plus 3 21% my bad okay so given these stats, okay, 176, 69. Look at my PDI. So if Death Gash gives us 10 plus 5 plus 3, 18 plus 3. 21%. How come my PDI is 87 from 69? How does it calculate it? 18? It's only 18%. Right? So 
So where did this 3% go? Am I doing it correctly? Is my math correct? <laughs> so, again. 69 to 87, that's an increase of 18. But if we check that gash, it should give us 21%, right? Hmm. Okay, so uh, I'll leave it to you. Maybe you want to report it, maybe not. But it should have a base 3% here. Maybe I'm, I'm missing some calculation or I'm just not uh, well informed on how this works. Okay, so... To sum it up again, Death Gash 63.8k, Assassin's Dewar 72.7k with uh, auto attack build. Okay. Oh, the 3.1, 3.2. Okay, so that's the missing. Okay, so it's correct. So they fixed it now because before, before the patch, I'm gaining a lot of uh, what you call this. PDI from Death Gash. Okay. Now, what else can we test for uh, weapon? I think nothing, right? I'm not gonna use, I'm, I, I'm not gonna test uh, Dagger because this focus on uh, jewels, right? Okay. Now, for headgear, if you're flea build, right? Then nothing will be this headgear okay now when it comes to uh, damage then uh, that's where it will change so let's put it here oh I don't have any do I have I think I have a plus 10 Hold on. Um, how can we filter? Let's just search for it. I I'm trying to give you the best damage comparison as much as possible, okay? Alright, let's do this. The reason why I want to use this is because of my other helmet has zeal and this one has crit damage okay so for a for flea build of course you want to maximize flea then the damage you'll you'll have with i'll, I'll just use death gash because uh, assassin's jewel has uh that rng effect this one will give you a huge increase in your flea. My flea right now 928. If I remove this, it's 820. You're you're losing around 100 flea, 100 plus. If we remove this, right? Or 80 plus because I have 28 plus flea in that headgear, and it gives you 63k damage. Now, if we use uh, Helmet of Orc Hero because you want the additional damage, right? From the plus 10 refine. What do you call this? Hercules? How much is Hercules again? 63.9, 63.7. And then if we use this one, 68.3. Oh! I'm gonna confuse. 63.7. 64k. point. Uh, I think we what? I forgot the name of this one. Platter. Let's just call it platter. Whew, it's hot. My 
my PC is burning. Okay. Now, damage wise, platter will give us the best damage output, right? And then, uh, or hero helm as the uh, second best, and then Hercules. But for the build that we're currently trying to uh, create, which is flea build, then Hercules. I, I won't trade that uh, 5k damage with my 80 plus flea that I can gain from Hercules. So it's a matter of preference how much flea you want to get, get. If you want more flea, then certainly Hercules. If you want more damage, uh, Spring Platter. But if you want utility, then I would suggest. Where's that? Where are my headgears? I would suggest this one. Because it gives you more chance to poison your opponent. Okay? So that would be my suggestion. Again, we're building this for MP. Okay? But maybe for yo yo, you can go with the Hercules since the meta there is hit and flee. Okay? Now for uh, face gear, I'm gonna recommend monoculars, okay, instead of uh, the winter's crown, because the winter's crown it only affects your SD. So if you want to prioritize your SD, then by all means go with uh, winter crowns or winter's crown. Where's that? And so many gears, I don't know where where they are. There you go. For Winter Crown, you you want to have a different build, right? You may want to have a flea enchant, and then you may want to have hit enchant, depending on how you want to build your uh, character. So right now we're focused on uh, flea, so I'll, I'll focus on that flea. So get some flea and chance on your uh, monoculars, okay? Or if you want pure damage for your monoculars, and you have some extra items, maybe you rolled twice. I don't know. Uh, go for critical crit damage PDI, whatever will help you, okay? But for the sake of this build, I suggest going for flea. You want as much flea as you can get to fully utilize this and to allow you to have different enchants on uh, your other gears. Oh, uh, dummy is 90% demi human uh, medium. Great. For uh, spike scarf, okay, let's test this with uh, this one. Okay. You need seal. I have hit here and then I have zeal here. So I think it's a moot point trying to test this. Because uh, I believe Spike Scarf will win 63.7k, 57k. Yeah, uh, we, re we really need to make use of auto attack damage it's such a huge boost for this build okay all right for back gear you need to check if your opponent or opponents are wearing uh call this nightmare card if they aren't wearing uh, wearing a nightmare card and your few attacks uh can cause sleep then starlight sweetie just use Starlight Sweetie and then for enchant go with uh, flea hit or flea and then whatever uh, damage increase do we have PDI here? I don't think we have PDI here right oh yeah 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 good point good point okay let's test this okay start again 57k and then I have Zeal 4 here, 63k, and then the new gacha, right? 58k, 207k. Did I say that correctly? 107k? 
Holy crap! 107k, so 200k for that one attack. 100 plus 100, right? Our attacks are con considered twice. So 58k. Question is, do I want the consistent 63k? Look at that. Let's say on 10 attacks, I gain, I don't know, uh, 50k, let's say 100k damage, right? And then here, consistently on 10 attacks, 30 plus 30, 60k times 10. No, 3k plus 3k, not 30k. 3k plus 3k, 6k times 10, 60k. I think net overall, this will give you more damage. If it procs at least twice. If that makes sense. In the span of 10 attacks. What's the chance? And there's no internal cooldown? Yeah. If you have zeal here on your gacha, I am jelly. Make use of this. I think for auto attack build, I may, I may just use this together with uh, Fib for that crazy amount of damage, right? If it procs, it's 107k. But the chance, what's the chance? 5%? It's a bit low. Hmm. But look at that. Let's say in 10 attacks, right? For the sake of conversation, 10 attacks. And uh, hold on. We deal 58k. Let's just use 50k. For example, 50k per attack. Uh, 100k per uh, animation, right? And then it's a total of 100k per. No, no, no. Hold on. So 100k if it procs, right? A total of 200k per animation. Where I'm going here is that in the spread of 10 attacks, let's just assume we can attack 10 times, right? Uh, 10 times, 50k times 10, uh, 500k damage, right? Or 1m. 1m if no pro. Okay? And then... If it procs even once, it's 1.2m. Okay? Now, we have this one, which is a consistent damage of 5k difference, right? From 58k to 63k, 5k damage. So let's let's go with 55k 110k for animation So we want to multiply Oh 1 proc 1.2m uh, 110 times 10 1.1m So, what this tells me, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Uh, I may be sleepy that uh, I'm calculating it incorrectly. If this mouthpiece procs even once, right? Out of 10 attacks, you're still uh, ahead by 100k damage than a zil for uh, mouthpiece. It's still a lot. Uh, I, I'm trying to compare. I know it's 5%, right? But what I'm trying to compare is we, we have players where 
they aren't lucky they aren't lucky with uh, their enchants with uh, gacha headgear okay uh, some on me I, I can't get any zeal on my uh, gacha and I don't have any enchants here right so regardless of the enchants at zeal 4 here my heart shaped mouthpiece is way better than my spike scarf what more if I have uh, zeal 4 on my heart shape so we can say that for us auto attacks right my heart shape is the best in slot for mouthpiece okay now that changes when you're trying to utilize uh, SD because if you want uh, more damage just pure damage from my testing it's gonna be light food for SD and then for hybrid damage because you auto attack and USD you want to make use of uh, Dream of Silk since it has a uh, physical penetration which affects SD and affects your auto attack okay so for AA from from our testing I I'd go with this build if it procs even once right if you want to play with that proc then go for this and that is assuming you need 10 attacks to kill an opponent okay you you have to <laughs> take note of the parameter don't don't just take my word for it okay my calculation here or example here is just uh, out of 10 attacks okay 1.1 and 1.2 assuming a 5k difference from zeal 4 of my mouth and then no uh, what do you call this? No enchants on my headgear. Let's see, maybe I'll get lucky while streaming. Of course not! Oh, that's hit! I should have gotten that. Yeah, I don't think I'll be lucky. Yep. No luck. Oh, maybe I can save this for just for the enchant and transfer it. Okay, I'll I'll worry about that later. Okay. Uh, for tail again for flea build, you'd want to make use of nine tails, okay? Because you are also going to lose a lot of uh, flea if you want to switch to uh, flower demon right 7 to 8 flea for uh, additional poison damage 10% poison damage and a chance to stack an additional layer of poison on your opponent okay uh, it, it's not worth testing it here because this dummy couldn't get poison to just show the effect of uh, this tail but you are going to trade 50 plus flea for uh, a chunk of damage. It's a huge chunk of, chunk of damage if you ask me. So it's up to you if you want to trade survivability <coughs> against burst or with burst. Okay. Now, uh, okay. Before we go with uh, cards. Let's go with enchants. Enchants. For weapon, nothing will beat SB4. Okay? SB with high PDI as much as possible. And then for headgears, uh, flea is your priority if you're flea build. If you want to build and make use of your SB2, then go hit with and flea. It's a bit expensive, but it's doable. I've seen builds where they, they can get both a uh, thousand plus. But that means all of your right hand side will be sacrificed for both flea and hit. Okay, for bat gear, uh, let's go back a bit. Uh, maybe you can make use of this. Okay, uh, if your opponent are wearing uh, Stormy Knight, uh, sorry, uh, Nightmare card. You can use Tamamo's Tail for more damage, okay? What 
else can we use? Uh, you can make use of this if you need more crit. Okay. Alright. Uh, enchants for the right hand side. Our priority is hit and uh, flee. 25 plus at least, if you ask me. And then here, SB4. And then for the left hand side, okay, if I'm going to build again or if I have some extra, I'm gonna build my enchant in such a way I can reach 170 or 200 poison resist. Oh no! My pilot logged in. Hold on. <laughs> hmm. Hold on, guys. I need to log in. Timestamp. What's the current timestamp? Wow, it's taking so long to log in. Hold on, guys. Wow, it's so hot. So where were we? How long have I been streaming? This additional three hours again? Oh my god. Trying to limit it. It's just the discussions or... Okay, as I was saying, if I'm gonna build my character, if I have extra... Uh, what do you call this? Extra items? And the meta is Stormy Knight back. My weapon will be uh, will have SB4, right? Or probably poison uh, resist, poison resist on uh, slippers, and even on garment. And wherever I can put poison resist and have at least 170 total, that includes the. <coughs> Chimera card because this back gear is such a pain in the ass. We can get uh, our own new poison. Okay. Now, what's next? Uh, for this build, right? You can go with uh, am I in Pantera? No, I'm not in Pantera. I should have. Teleported. Hmm. Someone was asking for the relic. After that, we're, we're gonna go uh, with the cards. Okay. So that's the main reason I want to switch to poison resist because people in MP are using SK back. In or and in order for me to counter them without relying on uh, just antidote, right? I'm gonna use 100% uh, to 100%, sorry, 100% from Chimera, and then additional 100% uh, from my gears, or maybe 75%, just to counter that effect. Um, now we're gonna go with the relic for this current build, okay? And I think the, the best relic for uh, most build will be the vision relic.
this one especially with the upcoming buff for the horn of the water right now this relic is so underwhelming because remember it's eight meters right from the description so from here you count eight squares four five six actually th this i don't see hidden enemies at this distance from from the relic uh npc right the description of horn of the water is eight it's eight right one two three four five six seven eight it should be around this one but really the only time i see everyone is when they're this close to me so right now horn of the watcher as it is it, it's not that helpful okay but with this build uh auto attack you can also make use of that one that way you can uh slot another damage card from your or for, for your accessory instead of using Horong. You can use Anaconda card because people are using RGOP. If you notice your damage is really low and they're using RGOP, use Anaconda card that helps with your damage. Right? Or use uh, Valkyrie Wrath card. Where is that? Oh, it's loaded somewhere. Where, where is it? Did you move it? I think I'm getting sleepy. <laughs> oh, this one. <laughs> yeah. Instead of Horong, then you can squeeze more damage uh, from, from this card. Okay. Alright. So, as it is, for this build, my number one relic would be. Horn of the Watcher because that gives me more damage cards that I can use. Okay. And with the buff, they say that you can see everyone on your screen that are hidden. So I guess we need to test if you're using uh such uh what do you call this? Such settings where you can have an ultra wide setting on your emulator then you have a huge advantage i can see uh, a huge area of my screen right and then my second one would be no miss relic the golden spirit boat because you can stack flea and maybe pdi on some of the slots like the face for your uh, enchant and then just disregard the hit so even at 400 hits you can still deal more damage and hit with your sd and that allows you uh, a lot more flexibility with uh, your equipment right so from uh undershirt you can make use of ac because that will just increase your sd damage and you don't need to rely on the second wave to ignore flee okay and then additional one or the third one would be the 50 percent relic right reason being is that if you are dying or based from your gameplay you're dying from a uh, one hit of uh, slayers in mp and uh there are monster rms that can crit you for uh 2m 1m and then this will give you additional uh it acts like an anti-fatal so i'd go with horn of the water first and then golden spirit boat horn of the water even though it's a little shitty or underwhelming at, it, at its current state it gives you additional slot on your card on your accessory which gives you more damage okay now uh for flexibility golden spirit boat that, uh, that will open a lot of gear combinations on your uh, character, okay? And then, uh, I'm not really a fan of uh, Divine Kim 
Carver. Okay? Reason being is that the PDs, the PD class, has a uh, high or can have high chance of stripping you additional chance, right? Because of the rune. And also, they still have that base chance to successfully strip you. So I'm not sure how, how this calculates, right? Does it include the base chance or does it not? But either way, I, I won't really waste my my uh, relic pieces for Divine Him Carver. No, not sorry, not Divine Him Carver, it's Year Necklace. <laughs> it, it's a good uh, candidate. And the reason why I'm discussing this is because it has auto attack and skill damage increase, which can definitely help your uh, overall damage if your auto attack uh, crit crit AA build, right? This one is pen, really good all around, be it a magic class or uh, physical class, just because of the M pen and pen. But then again, magic class are a different uh, discussion and they have a specific relic that they can use. If stats alone, this is still good. Uh, Horn of the Unyielding, that's why it's my third. It's because it has auto attack and uh, skill damage too, which helps you. Horn of the Watcher is just crazy, crazy, crazy utility. Imagine seeing all those uh, CM, uh, glass cannon CMs that's just messing with you with their uh, Twisted Bomb in Yo-Yo. You can just play with them. <laughs> okay. Uh, done with the relic. Let's go with... Um, cards. I'm getting sleepy. Let's finish the cards. Four cards offhand. Mm, I think my cards are in my book. Okay, offhand. Let's go with offhand. What do we want for offhand? If you're tanky build, if you want to build something tanky, I don't know how you're gonna do it, and I don't know how you're going to play that. I just don't find it really viable for uh, MP. But if you really need to be tanky, these are your choices. Basilisk card, GTB against magic, Basilisk for uh, against physical, right? Maybe you want to punish those uh, slayers. You may want to switch to an offhand with Maya card. Especially if your Nell has been triggered. Because unlike uh, other classes, right? They're anti-fatal or, or, or they don't have anti-fatal. And then when we trigger our Nell, we still take full damage. So that can help you uh, deal additional damage against uh, the Slayers, right? So when you have uh, your Nell activated, you can probably switch to an offhand with uh, a Maya card equip. It's not, uh, what do you call this? It's not top priority, but if you want to squeeze and if you want to improve those gameplay, these micro things, right, that you can do, it helps your team, your overall chance of winning with your team. Especially with uh, how prevalent uh, magic users are in MP, okay? What else? Um, you can make use of Frioni. 
when you're in nail status too because it gives you uh, phys PDI or physical damage plus 10%, right? You can also make use of... Uh, now, I, I'm, I'm not gonna... Uh, what do you call this? Filter the cards that uh, we can use. I'll leave it up to you depending on your budget, right? I'll just try to explain and discuss cards that uh, will be useful for a Blade Soul. Okay? You know your budget, you know your capability, so stick with those cards. But for the sake of conversation, I'm going to discuss uh, all the cards that are viable for, or at least most of the cards that are viable for Blade Soul. Dead Strout, the reason this is good is because of this uh, additional effect, the movement speed. And we know how annoying uh, people that move a lot and we are on AA build. So this really helps, okay? Every 15 seconds, so 50% move speed reduction for 5 seconds, that's huge. Couple it with your poison smoke. And then... Uh, we've discussed Frioni, Dead Frioni. We want the PDI when our nail trigger, so maybe you can switch. Okay? You can be creative. And then, if you're a tanky build, you can also use this because uh, attack damage reduction plus 20. Do take note, it's only for physical. Okay? Overall, this is the best in slot for me. Like, if I don't want to change uh, cards, then Dead Time Holder fits everything well-rounded when it comes to PvP because it, it gives you reduction, it gives you damage. Okay, what else? Uh, Anvi Star, if you want more damage, okay, that helps. And if you want hit, I think there's a card that gives you hit, right? Here, uh, Agent of Love, if you need more uh, ignored defense for your SD, then this will help. Okay. I think there's a card that gives you hit. Hmm. No, it's attack. Hit. Oh, this one. Hit plus 20. I know it may sound fringe, like it's only hit 20, but it can be the difference between you hitting that glass cannon build because remember they rely on flee. So they can flee your attack, but they can also be really squishy because of the choice of enchantments that they have on their gear. So every attribute for hit counts, okay? So don't sleep on those uh, small stats. And that's it for the offhand card, okay? For armor, um, let me to reset this. Armor, the best card for us, I think everyone knows, it's gonna be uh, Chimera Star, right? Where's Chimera Star? Where is, oh, there you go. <laughs> When taking physical damage, we have a chance to uh, poison our opponent, so that's 25% uh, defense reduction, additional source, right? And since we're an assassin class, we have a 12% chance, okay? Poison attack, it, it doesn't increase your poison damage, okay? Just want to be clear, it doesn't increase your poison damage. It increases your chance to inflict poison on the opponent, okay? So it's directly proportional to this uh, poison resist. So if an opponent is wearing, uh, what do you call this? Chimera Star card, you only have 50% chance to, bonus chance to deal or inflict poison because of the base 100% nullifying this uh, poison resist. <sighs> okay. Now, this third line here, the damage dealt to poison target. Now, this is an increase in damage if your, uh, what do you call this? If your target is poisoned, okay? 
It doesn't increase your poison damage. It increases your damage against the target that is poisoned. Okay? There's a huge difference there. Hey, Mark! Oh, it depends on what environment I'm gonna play in. Right? If it's MP, I think it's uh, crit auto attack still instead of uh, heavy ghost wave and uh, SD build. Okay, well, what else? Second card, if you're uh, on SD build, or the best card if you're on SD build is the Bloody Knight and Death card. Just raw damage, 30% damage, human damage. Nothing can compare. Since uh, if you're pure SD, you're just casting your skills, you don't have a chance to really take advantage of uh, poisoning your opponent. Okay? What else? Uh, if you want to be more defensive, uh, you can make use of the third card, additional poison resist against uh, what do you call this? fellow assassins. GR, uh, we have a lot of uh, players that loves to hide and cast Twisted Bomb on you. Then GR will definitely help you. And also Astara. Astara will help you as an overall damage mitigator. Okay? If you're an SD build, Moonak Star, if you need that Ignore Death, it's helpful in uh, WoWi. Right? If you don't have Bloody Knight, and if you're on SD build, you should just focus on uh, what to call this? Uh, auto attack. <laughs> uh, the KB card this is also good because if for some reason you get trapped, your soul breath doesn't work, and people have uh, genetic on their team, then a double the KB card. When equipped, gives you immunity to root. So some, what do you call this? Some utility cards that you can switch. RGOP is best against uh, assassin that just relies on uh, poison. But do take note that sometimes their poison uh, elemental increase can just uh, go through your RGOP card instead of them changing uh, element, right? Okay. Um, what's next? Garment card. This is where you want to test damage, right? But I think we've already tested uh, it from my pre previous video. The best damage increase that you can get will be from... Uh, mastering from the previous video right but let's test with dragonfly since this is an auto attack build now right and then mastering i have vagabond already i'm not gonna test the other oh uh, too bad i don't have this for flea build you may want to take advantage of uh whisper card I know it's just 10 flea from the other garment card because this gives you 10 flea, right? All of them. Oh, never mind then. This gives you flea plus 20. Was it Yegun? Oh, it gives you flea plus 20. So disregard uh, Whisper. But maybe if you're starting, you want to utilize flea, make use of this. Alright, let's test this. Okay. Oh. How do we do this? Let's do this. I'm still gonna use DG. I don't want to play with the RNG of uh, Assassin's Jewel. Where are my garments? Okay. What 
do we have here? We have four cards that we're going to test, right? Is there anything else? Do we want to test at Eclipse? Nah. I think it's okay. Okay. <laughs> mm. Alright. Base of 58.3. 58 Mastering card. Sixty two What's this card? Vagabond? Paper, Dragonfly Star gives you the best damage. And then the next one is Yegon Star. Now with the upcoming bo box, I think Dragonfly will, will become cheaper and you can buy it and use it than uh, your Yegon, Yegon card, right? However, if I'm going to choose, I'm going to use Mastering Star. Because even though Dragonfly and Yegen is around 1k uh, damage or maybe how, how, how many percent is this? You were take 3, 5% three, increase. Mastering Star not only increases your auto attack damage but it also increases your uh, SD damage. It makes you well rounded. So for uh, Blade Soul my recommendation for a uh, garment card would be mastering star if you're adding luck in your build okay but uh yeah I i'll let you decide if dragonfly is the best card for you okay what's next mm. let's go with I'm using Yegon, right? Oracle Mirror? What am I using? So, Combustible Knife. a minute so that we can activate this again we want to take slash however for well-rounded build nothing beats combustible knife because it affects your skills it also affects your uh, auto attack damage but since we're specializing with uh, crit AA then we would like to use or we would want to use dragonfly and then let's see if slash is better than a uh, combustible knight which i think will be oh it's already a minute man right oh there you go oh interesting I 
am I doing it correctly? So 63.5k from combustible knife and then slash is 59.9k. I'm expecting uh slash to give us more damage. Did I am equip anything? No, I didn't. So there you go. Uh, combustible knife gives us overall yeah fifty nine point nine key oops what <laughs> okay uh what's next? For shoes, mm, I think you really need to save for Moonlight. Moonlight and Edgar. For Moonlight or Edgar. You can uh, never go wrong with the two. The other cards are. Mm, really doesn't compare. Maybe you want the Fallen Bishop for more damage. Right? But. <laughs> nothing beats. Edgar or. Moonlight in, in this uh, slot Some people make use of mistletoe card and then equip desert wolf card and their weapon for the SD build for additional 100% ignore Because of the insight. I think it's because of the insight of Desert wolf card, but uh, We're gonna miss the utility of Edgar and uh, Moonlight Sir Chow plus 15 death gash or assassin's jewel. Your it depends on how you want to build your character. Again, there's no set, uh, there's no one rule to rule them all, or one guy to rule them all, right? Or maybe there is, and the guide is it depends on your build. For my build, which is AA crit heavy, then I'd go assassin's jewel. But if my build is crit AA and my SD is not just for execute, then Death Gash would be my uh, weapon of choice because it has damage increase which affects your SD damage, right? And then again, your whole gear set will change just to accommodate that build. My, my build right now, this is focused on AA. Just crit AA and flee, okay? Crit AA flee. Now for crit AA hit, and chance will change, headgear will change, tail will change, right? And then uh, weapon will change too. It depends on how I want to play and how I want to build. If I'm playing this build, right, and I'm, I'm using AJ, in my weapon, in my item slot, I have DKS still so that when i switch to my dks and then sd i will have a chance to deal more damage and then in my build if i'm gonna use what you call this no miss relic then i can make or i can take advantage of the dks so there's really no set rules but to adjust your build based on how you want to play your character. SKBH. I don't have a uh, breath breath holders armor or breath holders armor to really give you an informed uh, idea about it. Okay? Maybe maybe it will work, but how much ignore death can you gain from uh what do you call this? Can you gain from breath, breath holders armor? Where's that? Hmm. It's this one, right? How much ignore? Ignore death 10? 5? 15% ignore plus 8%? 23% ignore? So let's say 43% ignore with morale 4. 
Mm. And then how much? And then inside. I guess you can stack with uh, what do you call this? Ignore death. And then don't rely on your poison to re reduce the opponent's death. I don't know. I'm 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 not a fan of this one. Reason being is that how much is this? How much is a plus fifteen of breath holder's armor? I'll probably just use Perse perseverance. Again, it depends on how you want to build. Just because I'm using this one, it means this is the best build for everyone to follow. For me, for my character's uh, deposit, my character's cards, my character's uh, enchant, this is the best build for me. Right? It's because it gives me uh, physical damage increase and I have morale 4. Right? That covers the bonus ignore death just from uh, Breath's Holder's armor. Okay? And it gives me PDI. And then I have the luxury of choosing the weapon. I'm not stuck with uh, Stalker's Knife. Right? For you to take advantage of BH armor, you need to use Stalker's Knife. Is it Stalker's Knife or whatever? Holy Dagger, whatever. D don't don't be tunnel vision with uh, what you see from people people's build. You really need to uh, cater it to what you have or to what your characters have. It, it, it will cost you a lot, but at least you know what ticks for your current uh, deposit, or you can plan that oh this this set of armors will uh, fit my character will fit my game style right and uh, I don't know I, I think it's too much 250 to 300 uh, percent ignore that maybe maybe you can burst down uh, people but from my testing I can one one hit or two hits uh, but that's DA. So with my current gears, let's see how much ignore do I have? Hmm. I have an SD build here. Hundred fourteen. Ignore death. I can one shot a DA. I'm not boasting or anything. What I'm trying to explain here is that you need to check your character's stat and design your build, your gear selection, your gear choices, your card choices, your game style based on what you have on your character. Just because someone is using uh, this combination of armor, it mean, it doesn't mean that it will work on your character. This is why I'm, I'm doing this stream. I'm giving you information so that you can think for yourself, not just copy people's build. We're, we're, we're giving you this kind of uh, comparison just to give you a, an idea how much variance uh, different equips or equipment combination will give you. Just because this gives me 63.5k damage, it doesn't mean that it will be the same with you, right? We all have different uh, enchants, we all have different uh, deposits and cards and uh, gear availability. Make use of this uh, stream, of this information so that you can customize your character the way you want to. Uh, I did this because I'm getting a lot of uh, questions. What should I build my character? It's my first uh, time building PvE uh, Blade Soul. And also, aside from PvP, PvE, I also want it to be viable with PvP. I, I really couldn't answer that because I don't know what you have. I can only give you information that will help you build your own character. And also, there's another factor that uh, we need to consider. The PvP meta, right? So that PvP meta will 
will drive the enchants of your gear. If the PvP meta and relics are not allowed is full of flea, then all of your gears should have hit enchants, right? Or make a balance or play with your teammates. And I have a comment from Sir Well, I have HD plus BH with both with morale 4 still not that effective. And that just approves my point that it will really depend on your character, on what you have. Don't be tunnel vision with, or oh, oh, just because this player is using this and it deals this X amount of damage, it's already effective. What if their target is stripped down, right? Poison or debuff or etc. So don't, don't just blindly follow what, what you see. Use the information that uh, you're getting to make an informed decision and customize your character to however you want to build it. I think that's the best uh, advice I can give, uh, not only for Blade Soul players, but for everyone trying to play any games. It, it's really uh, a trial and error for this kind of game. Okay, last accessory cards. Accessory cards. Our choices will be uh, Valkyrie, Galion card for hit. If you want hit, if you want, if you want to balance it, if you want hit and both uh, attack, because let's say you know your opponent has X amount of hit, and just Zipper Bear will get you to the threshold of 100% hit. Use this instead of Galion, right? Because this gives you. Uh, additional damage or instead of getting that hit get a utility card uh, in in the form of horror or you can use rate star okay if you have a teammate that use that uses uh, twisted bomb or neutral damage and they told you that oh this person is using uh, GR then you can switch to this card Maui. okay So yeah, you, you can even use Baby Desert Wolf card because uh, a lot of people right now are using skill damage reduction instead of the uh, demi human reduction. So capitalize on that. Uh, I think we've discussed everything, right? Any questions before we end the stream? We discard. We we discuss the cards, right? What else? Hmm. I guess we didn't discuss SD Heavy Crit AA, right? So let's use this as an example. So for a Crit AA build that is focused on a balance of SD and crit or maybe more leaning towards SD then this is gonna be my suggestion you want to have hit that's why I'm using this okay I'm using winter crown for the skill damage morale for enchant and then I'm using light food just because this build is leaning towards SD but if I want to balance it some more I'll switch to dream weave Okay. That way it affects both my auto attack and my SD. Now if I really really want to focus on auto attack and then uh, don't want to change weapon then use DG. Because DG has more PDI that affects your uh, SD build. Okay. While AA is an advantage of Assassin's Jewel because it gives you uh, crit damage and auto attack damage. So, again, to my point, you need to learn which weapon gives you more advantage depending on the build that you want. If you want to lean towards SD, Death Gash is for you. If you want to lean towards Assassin, uh, crit auto attack, Assassin's Jewel is for you.
So the, the, this build is more balanced because uh, I'm, I'm using gears that increases my crit damage, critical ring increases my crit, which in turn increases my critical damage because of soul assassination rune. Uh, ROC versus Hermit without ninja clothes. I have covered that in my uh, previous video. Hermit's bundle in my current stat gives me better damage than ROC. Okay? You can check my previous video, previous uh, Blade Soul stream. We've tested that. Okay? Traceless? What's Traceless for? Hmm. I think it's a shoe card. Is it a shoe card? This one, right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess if you don't have Moonlight and Edgar, when where is an assassin damage inflict on poison targets plus ten? I guess this is a good alternative if you're starting. But if you want damage, then the, just go with a Fallen Bishop card. How much is Fallen Bishop card right now? This one is 7M. This one is 52M. Okay, that's a huge difference. However, this one is situational, right? What if the opponent has more poison resistance than you? Then you're off. You, you, you have a card that doesn't really help you in any case, right? Unlike if you just save 50M. You can sell fall uh you can buy Fallen Bishop card and use it while you're saving for your uh what's this? For your um moonlight. Can you test refine attack from Anvil max potential with your plus 15 MC? Mm, okay. Um how are we going to test it? Oh, we haven't discussed the card for the weapon. Okay. Let's discuss that. But I think I need to... Never mind. Uh, let's just use this. So right now, my refined attack, right? 40k. And someone is asking, what if I remove my anvil? The load time is so annoying. Okay, it's my anvil. Oops. Yeah, it's this one. So from 40k. What the heck? What did I do? Current equipment increase. Mm. Ah, it's because I switched this first, right? Just gonna make, just wanna make sure. Okay. Oh, it's just a review. No, we, we can't test this. I think Refine Attack only works on players, but you know what? Since we're already here, <laughs> I'm not sure if the dummy will make use of Refine Attack. You know what? We should have used it by 
or tested it by just removing uh, an acer okay uh, fine 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 oh maybe I don't need to ah there you go I don't this is not a save it's just a preview I don't think it will affect the dummy but uh, let's see let's see oh so it doesn't go to my home After this, we'll, we'll test uh, cards, which one gives you the best damage, someone was asking me. <gasps> okay. Oh, it does affect. So, 5k damage increase. I'm not sure how it translates to actual, but it certainly helps. Yeah, refine attack helps. Don't skimp on those uh, refined attacks. Weapon card. Okay, well, while I'm changing. Sir Timothy, uh, you may need to review my stream because uh, I gave my insight for garment cards. And... Uh, it's not really straightforward for for damage you can use this as your guide just for damage output but it's more than that really I forget <laughs> let me just change this and then we'll test the cards and then we'll wrap up the stream all right weapon cards I think a one staple card would be LOD especially if you're AA because that's 20% increase in final damage once we inflict our uh, status effect either poison or bleed or whatever is stated in in the card so we have a source for poison and then we have a source for the other uh status effect okay and i know it won't translate that much here okay just because we couldn't inflict any status effect in the dummy or against the dummy so lord of death for me this will be staple you have a chance to inflict stun curse silence poison and then when you inflict that to the opponent you deal 20% more damage, final damage multiplier. So, what else can you combine with LOD? Okay. First one, let's go here. Mm, I won't recommend a uh, Goblin Leader card so shit in pvp if you want uh really attack real attack speed you may want to use doppel i think you can go 500 attack speed 
I'm not sure how much damage increase there is, right? Because uh, it increases your uh, attack per second. It, it breaks the threshold. I haven't tested. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, then second one would be Owl Baron Star because it's a hundred percent increase in damage because it's Lex, right? Lex gives you a chance to double the damage. 5% chance uh, with a class that attacks so fast. No, it's not 5%. 20% chance. That's a huge chance for us to deal double damage. Okay. So LOD plus uh, All Baron would be good for damage. Okay. And. What's next? Now, Stormy Knight. Stormy Knight Star. Could be good if you really want to inflict a uh, status effect. If you're trying to build your character where you inflict status effect together with Raid Star card, I guess it, it can work. Really? But a lot of people are using uh, a lot of freeze resist. That's why it's kind of fallen off the meta. But I still. Uh, know a lot of people that relies on it and it's still effective so don't sleep on this you just need to make use of the mp gear that reduces the or increases your chance to freeze your opponent to make use of these right and this one metal porn this card is annoying it, it gives you better chances to deal more damage against support if you're using survival ring right so less demi human damage reduction uh, they couldn't hide and then against dps uh you can what do you call this you can lessen their damage you can remove the the utility that they have from the accessory slot so this is a good one for starters okay and my the the best combination that uh, I love using right now is Dead Soul plus uh, LOD. One of the I think this is the best card in PvP for PvP. What it does is for every heal that the inflicted target has received, it deals the same exact damage. The only class that doesn't get affected is Doram because of their skill to the party for some reason it doesn't count as a heal so I sent a, an email or a support ticket to the devs but they haven't responded they say they will look at it but four months after still nothing there's a reason why this card is uh, sought after in uh, auction and you will I think there was a joke where Naildor still hasn't won this card or has he won one already? <laughs> so yeah, best card with uh, LOD. Or you can use this one with uh, OB Star. It's also good. Alright. And what else? This one is good with your SD build. Okay, for crit AA. I'd rather use uh, other utility build than just straight up, straight up damage since we're not burst, right? I use penetration mostly if I'm burst uh, build, okay? This one with BK star if you want to be cute, I guess. <laughs> Rain down some uh, meteor. And then you can also make use of Baphomet card with obi star that's good in woey where's my baphomet card it's somewhere here but uh it it procs individual lex from obi star for every character hit while you're wearing a uh, baphomet card okay what else mm. you can also use freoni if you want to balance your flea and hit uh, stats and you're leaning towards SD 
for auto attack, it doesn't help that much. Uh, Stormy Night Star, we've discussed this. Griffon card. Mm, if you want to have some fun, want to experiment, yeah, you can use this. But it's not really that effective. Mutant Dragon Star card. Auto attack has a chance, 15% chance to release Fireball. And now, what's interesting about this is that it reduces the opponent's damage reduction by 15%. This is huge. Some people are sleeping on this, but uh, this is a good uh, card to start with. How much is this? And this is cheap. Right? So le let's try if it will affect this. Forty mm, K. This is trigger. Look at that. Six K damage increase. This is huge because the setting of my uh what do you call this? Of my dummy is ninety percent dummy strength. 6k is huge okay so don't sleep on this it's cheap right and can uh, increase your damage so where's my where did I put it or where did Gab put it Gab where did you put my dead soul card no, it's not here Oh, here. Mm. Okay, so from 47k, let's add an additional. Fifty-one K. That's huge. <laughs> and then if you want well we can test uh what do you call this? We can test OB star uh, no no LOD star but I'd use it yeah I think you can partner it with with oh uh, mutant dragon co mutant dragon star card now 47k with Lex you can see how much time uh, will Lex right 90k straight up 100% uh, increase Oh, no, no. Yeah. So, yeah, those are the weapon cards. Uh, are we still missing something? How much is this right now? It's 52M. Not bad. However, how much is Mutant Star, Mutant Dragon card right now? Uh, 10M. So you better buy it if you want to test it or you can just buy uh, straight out buy I believe there's a lot of mutant dragon card 13M is cheap and you want the deposit of this one because it increases your chance so let's see maybe you want to buy I think the best time to buy is now mutant dragon star oh there are 33 pieces you can buy it while it's cheap there's there's no mutant dragon card. Oh, that's gonna be good combination because mutant dragon star card will increase this base chance, 15% base chance because of the depot. Does it count though? Or no? Uh, whatever. You guys can test it. Ah. Uh, hold on. Let me deposit this. Alright, 
Oh, we've discussed this. No use for us. Unless opponent stone curse, but eh, situational. I think that's it. And then for headgear, if you're auto attack, you want Nightmare Star. Okay? Because of the sleep effect. That opponent may uh, give you. If they and uh, another alternative is that you can use. Uh, I have so many Nightmare cards. Where is that? You can use the. No, not this one. I think it's this one. Oh. Mentalist card, immune to fear. So, yeah. as you notice, I'm wearing this one, and I, I need to supplement it since uh, fear is still becoming uh, a tool teams use for PvP. So, I'm trying to switch my uh, cards right now. So, then again. Proves my point that you need to adjust to the meta. Oh, what is the benefit of crit dagger build over crit katar build? I don't see any benefit really. At the current meta, I don't see any benefit of using crit dagger build because you'll run into the same problem as most RMs are having which is most people are building against RM so people are building crit resist and you'll have a tough time hitting enemies with your uh, dagger just make use of a hit build with your dagger and I suggest using venom dagger for a, a dagger build because uh, it's another layer of poison that's another layer of poison from venom knife I think Venom Knife or Venom Dagger? I forgot. I think Venom Knife. No, it doesn't uh, inflict. Where, where did they need that? Anyway, yeah, if you're gonna build a dagger build, just make sure that you're aware of the meta that people are building 300 plus crit resist. So imagine if you're. Um, I don't have a set build right now for crit but if I equip this one just to show you how much crit I'll have I'll have 153 <laughs> you, you won't hit any opponents alright any other before we go Dude, I can't test it. <laughs> I won't be able to test it because we can't inflict poison against this opponent, this dummy. And I need to uh, go in PvP to really test it. Right? Uh, yeah, I won't be able to test it, man. Now, uh, best thing to ask is sir idol if the poison damage from from traceless card is final damage or not if it's final damage then it's the same as your tail i think the tail is also final damage <laughs> i can't test that man I'm doing my best to help you guys test, but uh, you're asking me uh, situations where I really couldn't help you. But let's try. Uh, a plus 10 gives you 10% damage increase. So you're losing auto attack damage 8%, and then an additional chance to land more crit damage, which is 10%. So you're losing 10% crit damage for crit damage enhanced and 8% auto attack damage now you can go back you can review this video we compare death gash and assassin's jure they have two different uh, effect 
or uh, benefits. One is focused on crit damage and AA, and one is uh, focus, not really focus, helps your overall damage, be it auto attack, crit damage, and your skill. So I'm gonna ask you, is it AA or uh, what to call this? Uh, skill build. Then if it's AA, then Jure. If it's uh, not, then Death Gash. Now, if you're asking for plus 10, I couldn't help you. I don't have the data to give you if 8% damage increase is better than 18%. Sorry, 8% auto attack damage increase is better than the. What do you call this? The. 21% damage increase that you'll get from Death Gash. However, I'd say just get your plus 15 Death Gash and save for your uh, Assassin's Dure if you really want crit attack. Because Death Gash is cheap. And the enchant that I would suggest is SB with high PDI. Okay? <laughs> Can we have more like this once a week? <laughs> how 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 long have we streamed? Three hours again. I, I was trying to cut the stream down to thirty minutes. I guess it's not possible. Um, let's see. Uh, what else are we missing for Blade Soul? I think I think we've covered pretty much for Blade Soul, right? We've discussed slightly how to build. Uh, Crit auto attack that leans heavily towards SD, which is what you're seeing right now. Instead of undershirt, instead of uh, monoculars, I'm using this equipment because it increases my skill damage. Okay. No more AA ninja. I'm so sad that I invested on my AA ninja. They're really not viable. Why would I pick Ninja, a Ninja, that has the same crit problem as RM, right? And doesn't have uh, Aspixia or uh, Soul Breath or a barrier like the Slayer, right? You're just giving free frags uh, from your to your opponent. It, it is sad to say that Ninja is really not viable with the current kit that it has. The meta right now is people surviving and dealing damage while they're invulnerable. So, if, if it goes back to the meta where the only invulnerable skill is Faith Prey, maybe, just maybe, Ninja will have some uh, slot in the current meta. But right now, the only ninja builds, build or builds that are viable would be uh, magic ninja and pure support ninja. Then again, I wouldn't go for pure support ninja because that is already covered by magic ninja and can dish out damage. Skill type, it's winter crown. Winter crown. For any skill type, it's winter crown. Because the only way you can take advantage of monocular is if you're attacking really fast to take advantage of the uh, true damage. The true damage isn't that significant for uh, a burst skill, but it is significant enough if you're attacking twice in a second. Why Fisher Beam over Ring of Contract? It's because from the data that we had earlier and actual test Fisher Beam deals more damage than, than Ring of Contract especially that oh we haven't discussed uh, runes I'm using uh, Soul Assassination Rune which gives me more crit damage the higher the crit I have Crit Dagger 15 DK uh, I wouldn't really suggest crit dagger. If you're going to go crit dagger, then go venom knife or venom dagger. DKS is mostly for burst of your skill. 
Yeah, the, the problem with crit dagger is that your crit rate will be really shitty, but if you want it for fun, go ahead. My perspective will always be coming from a uh, competitive PvP. Okay? Alright, uh, anything else? Oh, this one, last. Okay. Oh. I'm using Fierce Armor Breaking. Oh. Maybe I should change. Okay, for runes. These are the runes that I'm using right now. Okay? Soul Assassination for crit damage. Focus on AA. And then Soul Paralysis. Yes, Soul Paralysis because of the move speed. Okay? If you don't want this, you can change it with, uh, where's that, Jurgen, Jurgen Rune, or, what's the other one, it's another defensive, or Storm Parry Rune, but again, this is my build, I want that move speed reduced as much as possible so they will uh, bait in my Poison Smoke, okay? And also, I can attack them because uh, if they keep moving and they're, they aren't slow, there's a glitch and a latency issue with uh, where I'm playing. So I want their move speed really, really reduced. And then Void Poison for the Poison Resist. That way, I won't be affected by their uh, SK back. I want the highest. Uh, poison resist I can get Okay, and then the staple soul breath rune Soul hunting pack and then death wound rune. Okay, and then carve your rune in such a way where you only have one blue rune that will uh, Take advantage of the small runes right size strength luck and Vit now if you want more hit go for dex but i wouldn't change size buff because size buff deals more damage from my testing compared to the other uh stat uh small rune this gives you three percent damage against uh demi human and this gives you six percent more damage okay Is script type of AA useful in PTL? Uh, no idea. <laughs> I don't build my uh, assassin uh, towards PvE. Uh, I think us assassins are for PvP, really. For PvE, uh, I suggest building another class. But if you really want... Mm, I haven't really tested. I haven't really tested. So I can't give you information. Okay. Alright. Uh, let's end the stream guys. Let's wrap it up. I hope uh, I was able to help you decide on how you want to build your characters. And uh, if you have friends that have uh, questions, maybe you can refer them to this video in the first one. It doesn't answer everything, but it should give them a good idea so that they can have uh, an informed decision to make. Right? That's the goal. And uh, thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.